Hey y'all. Today we're going to make barbecue sauce. We made it last year together. Um, it was in August. August 28th it happened to be when it aired and that's my daddy's birthday. <laughs> um, and I wanted to tell y'all there's something we did. We put it in a jar. What I do with my jar of barbecue is probably hiding under this cabinet. Yes, it is. Let me dig it out. But we put a jar and we did a little water bath on it and to see if it lasted because I had never canned it before and so I said let's see well that was in August so it's almost a year right and look at here it is still sealed nice and pretty and good so I'm so happy about that um, to let y'all know it cans really well yes and it still smells like the day we made it last August. I love that. So, yes, you can can it and it will work just fine. I normally just put it in a big old jar and put it in my refrigerator because you use it during the summer. So, that's no big deal. So, if you don't want to jar it or can it, do like I do and just put it in a big old jar or a couple of big jars in your refrigerator. You can share it with other people and just keep it refrigerated for the summer. I think it'll last like up to six months or so. But... We, ours doesn't stay around that long. Um, I didn't put my pot up here first because I wanted to show y'all this shirt that my good friend Cynthia got me. She went to some little trade days and it says American Farm Girl and it has some hens on it. And my hens certainly are American Farm Girls and I just want to thank you Cynthia. She's, she's a sweet precious soul in my life. She's one of those that um, I thank God for every day, every day. She's a wonderful person in my life. I uh, said, so thank you, Cynthia, girl. And it's nice and soft and cool for the summer. I love that. And it's blue. So it goes with our July the 4th barbecue sauce, right? I call this Mama's barbecue sauce because my mama taught me how to make this. I was probably 12 when she started saying, dump this and dump that and dump that. And I was like, wow, we made barbecue sauce. So she's the one that taught it to me. So get you a big old pot and start with 64 ounces or 181 grams of ketchup and this is where you can buy this is great value brand it's not real real expensive you can kind of cut corners here if you want to do that um, and I do I want to do that because all we need is some ketchup okay doesn't have to be one of those name brands it's more expensive I think this one was about a third to a half the cost of some of those name brands so I like that and the way I get the rest of this ketchup out of here after I do all this this number I'm going to use 15 ounces or 444 milliliters of Worcestershire sauce and right here we call it rooster sauce because it's hard to say and I have some friends Chance, Chance and Brittany and he calls it rooster sauce and I'm like yeah I like that better so I'll put some of this rooster sauce in here and I have Lee and Perrins but many times in the past I have used an off name brand of that as well I just happened to have that so I said well I'll use what I've got and I shake 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 that up to get all of that goodie out of there we want all of that base don't we and the reason why I like to use ketchup well one thing this is my mama's barbecue sauce recipe okay but it's it's ingenious because it already has that um, vinegar bite to it and the tomato -y bite so it already has a lot of your flavorings in it if you use ketchup instead of starting with a tomato base so I love that okay the rest of our roaster sauce is going up in here the whole bottle splash 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 Next, we are going to put one to two tablespoons of yellow mustard. And if y'all watched me make this last year, I was trying to measure this out because my mama never measured. She just said, dump this and dump that and would look and say, okay, that's good. So I never measured. And I was trying to come up with measurements and I put a quarter cup of mustard. I know y'all remember that. And it almost turned the barbecue sauce a little yellow. <laughs> and I was like, okay, that's a little too much. This is what I normally do. Squirt, okay? That's it. And that is going to be anywhere, that's actually like one tablespoon of mustard. It's just a little tang in there. It's yellow mustard. You could use any other kind of mustard you want to, too, and make this your own little recipe. And that's what I love about a base recipe. Next, we're going to put two tablespoons of lemon juice. 
And y'all know I'm really big on using fresh lemon juice, but my mother used this, and this is Mama's barbecue sauce. And so, and it's easy. You can keep this in refrigerator door. So, we're going to stick to that two tablespoons. But you could actually grate some lemon peel in here and put some fresh lemon juice too. Two tablespoons of lemon juice concentrate. Next goes one tablespoon of onion powder. See if I can do this without dumping the whole little jar out here. There we go. One tablespoon of onion powder and one tablespoon of garlic powder. And I don't put any salt because you know that ketchup and Worcestershire, everything's got salt. So these are garlic powder, onion powder, not salt, okay? And then next, and this is what my mama did, was one 12 ounce can of a beer. Any kind of beer that you want to put in there. This is Michelob Ultra. I've put Miller Light. I've put Bud Light. Um... And Michelob Ultra, I think that's the only ones I've tried. And if you don't want to use beer, you can use wine. Wine makes a beautiful barbecue sauce as well. This is my mama's recipe. And I've tried other things to not put the beer, like for instance, just leaving that out. And it doesn't give it the same depth of flavor. This gives it a really nice tang and a yeasty flavor. Um, and it concentrates and of course all the alcohol cooks out of this we're going to cook this so no worries with that okay but um, I've never found anything I could substitute for that so you got to put it or you can put wine you can and I've had it with wine it's very very good like a red wine um, let's see next thing is one quarter cup of liquid smoke y'all know I love this liquid hickory smoke this is the exact same one my mother would use Natural Hickory Smoke, Fort Worth Stockyards is what it says. Original recipe, liquid smoke. And it is wonderful. It's like you've been smoking something. So it's terrific. And how much did I say? Where we go? One quarter cup. Here we go. Like I say, I've had to try to come up with some measurements here for us because my mother would just say, pour it. Pour a little bit more. Pour a little more. You know, I'll be like, okay. So there's our quarter cup of liquid smoke. You can make it smokier if you want to. Next is three quarters cup of brown sugar. And I use dark brown sugar, but I just love that molasses flavor. You can use light brown sugar. And if you don't want to use sugar, you can totally omit it. But we like a little bit sweet and savory and a little spicy. That's one two quarter cups. And here goes three just like that smelling good already guys the next thing is three tablespoons of molasses and this is something that I added through the years that's my mama's basic recipe and also if you want to saute some garlic and saute some onion chopped in a little bit of oil in the bottom and then I'll puree that with an immersion blender. That adds another depth of a garlic and onion flavor. But still put your onion powder and your garlic powder too. So still do that. Um, and my mother would do that from time to time too if we had time. Just depends on what kind of time you have, right? And this is going to be about three tablespoons of molasses. And my molasses is almost out. I have got to get to the store. Yes, I do. That's one. Come on. Two. <laughs> this is about like watching paint dry, isn't it? About like watching slow as molasses. Now we see where that saying came from, don't we? It's true. It's true. Okay, guys. That's something I add a little extra. But it also, molasses has a nice deep flavor just like in the brown sugar and it has a little bit of a smokiness like you can taste that fire how it was processed and I love that and it, it enhances that smoke liquid smoke and something that I put in here because one time I was making this at the house my boys were little and I had no brown sugar no molasses nothing and I wanted some sweetness in there and I was trying to think of something a little deeper than just like white sugar sweetness and I had no honey nothing and I had grape jelly in the refrigerator for kids, peanut butter, and jelly sandwiches. 
And y'all, I said, hey, I'm going to use that. And let me tell you, I loved it. And since then, I just put some in there just for good measure. And it's like a quarter cup, okay? <laughs> and I love the deep color it gives it. Y'all know it's purple, so it's got to go in there, right? I know. I mean, I need to quit just trying to explain myself, don't I? <laughs> And let's see, this is something else. I like to make it a little spicy. My mama didn't. You could go with that. You can start adding hot sauce to it, anything. The spicy I love to add is chipotle peppers in adobo sauce. One thing is they are smoked jalapenos. So it also plays off that liquid smoke flavor. And they're in a tomato-y, garlic and onion-y sauce in here. And it's just wonderful. And of course, those smoked jalapenos add a little bit of spice. And I put a generous, generous tablespoon of them like that. Maybe a little more generous, just like that. Okay, guys? And you can chop them up as small as you want to. I'm going to put this in a jar and they'll last in my refrigerator for a long time. But that adds a spiciness as well. I'm going to get this stirred up. And don't put it on your heat yet because this yellow mustard, and probably any mustard, will curdle if you try to squirt it while it's getting hot. If you try to put that in there, it'll curdle and not want to mix into your sauce. So first do it this way and then add it onto the fire, okay? I'm so excited though about you can can that, you can jar it. I'm really excited about that. All these years I've never done that and I did it last year with y'all and I just love that it lasted. I've, I've been waiting and waiting and waiting all these months, almost a year. I think I waited 10 months. It was all I could stand because we are out of barbecue sauce and I ran out of barbecue sauce and I wouldn't open that one. I want to try to get back to when we made it again. <laughs> okay, y'all. You can taste it right now, too, and it's going to have a lovely, lovely little flavor just like this. Sure is. I want y'all to see its color. Y'all see its nice, deep color? Mmm. It doesn't need a thing except some meat. That's what it needs. I'm going to put it over here and get it going. get it going on medium medium low and all you've got to do is heat it through for about 15 20 minutes on about medium low and it just kind of concentrates it it cooks the alcohol out of that beer and it just brings all your flavors together and it's wonderful and we're gonna have it for chicken and ribs and pork uh, butt and pork loin and anything and everything we want to put barbecue sauce on which is a lot of stuff beans we can make some barbecue beans I'm going to do that this weekend um, for the 4th of July and this year is the first year we've been able to all get back together um, and feel a little safer about it and I know that lots of us don't celebrate 4th of July because it's an American holiday but if anything we can just celebrate this weekend all of us together that we've got some hope some light at the end of the tunnel with this pandemic and our vaccinations out and people are moving forward and starting to get around one another again um, it's depressing to be alone isn't it i know uh during this pandemic one time it was the first mother's day it wasn't this one but the one before that my kids dropped presents out for me and little sweet cards on this porch of this canon kitchen and i didn't realize it was bothering me so bad until i sat down on those steps and I didn't get to see my kids or grandkids and I just read their cards and I squalled. I just had a good old cry right there on the front porch and was like, wow, this is bothering me more than I thought it was, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and so I'm just thankful we're all starting to see some light at the end of the tunnel and all of us have lost loved ones um, from it and seen many of our friends go through it. and. The one thing I like about it is it's brought the whole entire world together. We've all been on the same boat together, right? I know. I know. So at least it brought us all together to show us that none of us are higher than the other or lower than the other, that we all can get God, you know. So at least it showed us that, you know, and kind of brought that into perspective for us. And maybe this, this weekend or 
uh, for us, 4th of July, Independence Day is not going to be just about that. But this weekend, all of us can just celebrate and be glad that we're moving forward and we're getting through some of this hope, right? I know, I know, I love it, love it, love it. Getting getting some hope going, yes. That's what we live by, it really is. Um, hope, that is it. Something I wanted to share with y'all, though, if you want to if you want to stay and listen was um this uh some facts about the july 4th that are little known that we don't know let me find my glasses y'all know i can't be reading without them so if y'all want to hear this we love history and lots of us do so i love this this is on a calendar i've got inside the house it says right here little known fourth of july facts um of course, the Declaration of Independence was announced on July 4th through the formal signing. It didn't occur until August the 2nd, and the colonies actually voted to accept it in on July 2nd. So what is the real Independence Day? John Adams, who first opposed the idea of declaring the independence from England, wrote a famous letter to his wife, Abigail, about how he believed July 2nd would be a day that was remembered and celebrated in America for years to come. And it says apparently everyone else remembered otherwise. <laughs> they remembered it two days later, right? This I like about the flag. And y'all see, I just threw this together real quick. Our little arrangement back here with some flags in it. It says, Oh glory, did you know that there have been 28 versions of the United States flag to date and that the most recent one, I love this, was designed after Alaska and Hawaii joined the Union. It was the result of a school project. This is so cute. Robert Heft was 17 when he came up with the flag design in 1958. He originally got a B- minus on the project. <laughs> But when his pattern won national competition and became the next flag, the teacher raised his grade to an A. Ha! Huh, you think? You think? Maybe? <laughs> oh, boy. I'm glad I won that teacher. Um, and also, this is really cool about some of our presidents. It says, a patriotic death. Let's see. Three American presidents have died on the 4th of July. Isn't that something? Thomas Jefferson and John Adams died on the very same day in 1826. Very same year. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? They had been rivals in everything. Even about who would live the longest. Adams' last words were about his longtime foe, Thomas Jefferson lives, he said. In fact, Jefferson had died five hours earlier than Adams, but Adams had never gotten that message. The two actually had become friends in their latter years with extensive correspondence, and their letters to each other are published in several books. And another president, James Monroe, is the third president to die on July 4th, but he died in 1831, five years later. So I just thought that was really interesting. And kind of cool, a little bit of history, huh? Yeah, about the 4th of July, things that happened. I, I think that's terribly coincidental, don't y'all? And something, guys, I don't know if y'all can all see. I think you can. Let me see if I can move this up here. This is John during our racing days. I'm going to move it around because I've got lights carrying on that's causing us not to be able to see it. This is John in the race car. See that? He's the points leader this year. He was points leader many years because John is, um, well, he's going he's gonna to do everything he can to win, whatever he does. And he was points leader. And so you see the American flag he's carrying around in that car. That was what uh, he did to lead the race. And you see there's a couple of other cars in other um, categories that were carrying the flag too. But he happened in this picture. He's right out front. And they snapped that picture of him and of course I got it and of course I got it blown up poster size because I dearly loved it because it's got that old glory out the top and John's driving so I just wanted to share that with y'all this is some of our past memories seems like a million years ago we raced <laughs> but um it really wasn't that long ago so anyway I just want to share this with y'all this hangs in our um, 
game room in the house and one time I'll take out through the game room I've got many memories like that just hanging everywhere of all of us our family but um so I just brought that down here today I thought I wanted to share that with y'all and John didn't even know I brought that down here he'll get a good kick out of that yeah he will 